Let's welcome in the powerhouse panel. Alex, see you in just a moment. We start with senior contributor at the Federalist, Benjamin Weingarten, National Advisory Board Member for Project 21, Christopher Arps back with us, and co-host of Wake Up America Weekend. Allison Maloney is here. And Allison, just quickly, you brought up that Hillary Clinton thing. She's supposed to speak at the uh, Democratic Convention today at the Sheraton in Midtown Manhattan. Um, this is an event that's it's one of the biggest events in Democratic politics in New York. Uh, past presidential candidates have spoken there before. Hillary Clinton spoke there in 2016. Uh, is this real, or is she just trying to stay relevant but until she makes a decision? Yeah, I, I think it could be real because we've seen her in the media a lot more. She kind of was silent for a while, and over the last couple of months, she's been doing interviews, she's been doing podcasts. Now she's spe supposed to speak, so it's interesting. I don't know if this is the Democrats' only choice, but look, with this whole Durham investigation, who knows if that's going to maybe change her mind. We'll see. She's obviously not really answering any questions, neither is the White House. And then you saw on Twitter she attacked, uh, obviously, everyone who is saying that, you know, look, we need to look into this she's saying well this is just not true yeah yeah it's interesting i think it could be a perfect storm for hillary clinton if she if she decides to somehow get into the race in 2024 but if you think about it the clintons you know her husband the former president uh he, he's the comeback kid but he's been lying to us for the last 30 years he lied to us as a candidate for for governor and then a candidate for president in 1992 he still got elected twice so who knows but that's going to be interesting to see uh, uh her speak at that event today i, I think it's very real um, Joe Biden, by the way, Benjamin, he's going to be in Ohio today trying to drum up support for Build Back Better. Uh, but I think it's pretty clear that the American people aren't really concerned with spending another uh, trillion dollars. Um, according to a, a morning consult Quinnipiac poll, the most important issues facing the American people right now, inflation, runaway number one, 27 percent, immigration came in second for the first time. Immigration starting to move up uh, uh, the poll at 12 percent, COVID number 10. Joe Biden's approval rating, 35% right now. What does that tell you, Benjamin? Yeah, I mean, this would seem like a desperation effort to try to hold whatever you can of whatever remains of the Reagan-Democrat sort of coalition, which I think is basically gone. I do think the Republican Party, uh, not to its own credit, but really to the credit of Donald Trump, has become the workers' party. And you see Joe Biden grasping at straws to try to shore up a base that he believes Democrats needed to avoid a total bloodletting in 2022 and then in 2024. And, and let me just say, Hillary Clinton sort of surfacing and on the periphery of things right yeah. now, what an utter indictment of Joe Biden. What kind of commentary on that is the Democratic Party <laughs> that she believes That's that she ought point. to be a major player right now at this stage? And how does she does it? She tweets out a Vanity Fair article that doesn't deal with right. any of the claims whatsoever that Durham has raised. And oh, by the way, her key advisor is the national security advisor right now, and he himself is heavily implicated in John Durham's investigation, and that's Jake Sullivan. Yeah, the, the revelations that her campaign spied on the Trump campaign in 2016, um, I think we knew that, uh, but she was likely the source of the funding for the Steele dossier, you know, the Russia hoax. We heard Russia, Russia, Russia. Uh, Donald Trump had ties to Russian banks, Christopher, and then it, it turned out that, that none of it was true. Yeah, and, you know, it looks like Hillary is trying to uh, send up a trial balloon uh, for a possible presidential run. Yeah. But with this Durham investigation coming out, it kind of throws out uh, her premise that she would probably run, that Donald Trump stole the election because of Russian collusion. You remember after he won in 2016, that's what her and her minions said. Well, with this Durham investigation, it's going to be hard to uh, try to make that case. That's a good point. Allison, when I look at that Quinnipiac poll, Inflation being number one at 27 percent, the last time inflation was number one, coincidentally, 1980, when the American people turned away from Jimmy Carter and his politics mm -hmm. and elected Ronald Reagan. And that welcomed in 12 years of Republicans in the White House, Reagan twice and then H.W. Uh, Bush once. Uh, gas prices one year ago today, national average, according to Gas Buddy, 251 a gallon today. 351 a gallon. That's the national average. So it's a full dollar more. That's 40 percent. Uh, yet Joe Biden wants to. He says a gas holiday yeah. could, yeah, could be the, the answer. It would lower gas prices by 18 cents uh, per gallon, but that's not going to make much of a dent when you're no. talking a buck more. Gas prices yesterday, or oil prices rather, almost $100 mm -hmm. a barrel. Yeah, that's a Band-Aid, right? This is going to like maybe help for a second. He needs to get to the root causes, as they always like to say. Like, what is the problem? Maybe we perhaps should be responsible for our own energy is what we were doing prior to that. But he doesn't address any of these things. Like, go going back to that poll, right, inflation, number one issue. We have the border, all of these things that are important to Americans. He's, he's not even addressing 
guessing. Yeah. He's just, he wants to spend more money, which is the opposite of what you should be doing. And, and you know, look, you have the border problem. You have so many issues, yet he's ignoring it. And I think it was, what is it, $276 more a month Americans are paying right. because of inflation. And, and, you know, who knows what the next rate's going to be, if we're going to be paying even more. So a little gas holiday is not going to solve this problem. Although you can add the word holiday to anything, and it makes it sound okay. Fun, yeah. Be a little prison holiday, but it's just, you know, it's going to be <laughs> a holiday. Break. You're going to be in jail, but it's going to be. Uh, I want to play a soundbite from Chuck Schumer yesterday. He says uh, Republicans are to blame for high inflation. Take a listen. The Democrats are the ones laser focused on showing where we stand and offering solutions that aim squarely at the problem. Republicans seem to have no solutions, just rhetoric. The other side, sadly, seems oftentimes motivated by something else. Rather than working with us in a bipartisan spirit, our Republican colleagues seem more comfortable giving speeches that go on and on about rising costs without offering any solutions. I've said it before on the air, Benjamin. <laughs> Donald Trump's last day in office, January 20th, inflation's at 1.4%, which is right where it's supposed to be. According to the Fed, anything under 2 is is pretty good. It's at 7.5% right now. Allison, to pick up on what you just said, according to the Fed, 7.5% inflation equals a $3,500 annual tax on the average working American. $3,500, and inflation's only going up. It's unbelievable. Benjamin, your reaction? <laughs> A, a real gas holiday would be opening up America's energy sources, not closing pipelines, right. period, full stop. Right. In terms of inflation, why are prices skyrocketing when you spend trillions of dollars that you don't have and you print money? Anyone can just pull up, pull up on the Fed's website, a chart of money, the money supply. It's a straight line up like this. Of course, you're going to have a massive increase in prices when you have trillions and trillions of incremental dollars chasing the same amount or declining amount of goods. They can't change that with their rhetoric. Really what they have to do is either dramatically slash spending, which they're obviously not going to do, yeah. or they have to raise interest rates substantially. And raising interest rates, of course, is going to crush everyone who is a debtor, including the federal government. And that's the, the Hobson's choice that the Biden administration finds itself yeah, it's got in right real, now. It's, it's become really expensive. Just everyday life has become so much more expensive under Joe Biden in, in less than 15 months. It's really shocking. Um, we got about a minute left. Ned Price is the State Department spokesman. Uh, yesterday, he says that Russia is doing exactly what they did in 2014, right before they invaded Crimea. Take a listen. The Russians uh, are want to point to a fabricated pretext uh, before undertaking aggression. Uh, it's precisely what they did uh, in 2014 in Ukraine. Uh, these claims of genocide have haunting echoes of what we heard in 2014 uh, regarding the persecution of Russian speakers uh, in eastern Ukraine and Crimea. Uh, this is uh, in some ways eerily similar uh, to uh, what we have experienced before. Very bland guy, Ned Price, by the way. Uh, Christopher, what's your... So Antony Blinken and Kamala Harris are going to be in Germany today meeting with the Ukrainian president again. Um, it, I know that only one person knows the answer to this, and that's Vladimir Putin, but I, I want to get your take. D do you think that Putin is, is bluffing? I think he is bluffing. I think Putin is taking a page out of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's playbook, where you use a lot of an aggression to try to get concessions from the West. And uh, we see, fortunately, that's not working. Plus, I also think, you know, there's an old joke that says that Russia is just a gas station with nuclear weapons. If you see during this whole crisis with Ukraine, oil mm. prices are close to $100 a barrel, which is helping Putin, uh, Putin uh, with his cash reserves. Yeah, right. Benjamin, why not just reopen Keystone, we wouldn't have to rely on foreign oil. Uh, and if, if Russia does invade, you think gas prices at 351 are bad? They're only going to go up. Um, panel, a lot more to talk about this morning, uh, including Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who says masks are now illegal, and he just signed a bill into law. Of course, you can still wear a mask. Your child can still wear a mask, but uh, that can't be mandated in the state of Virginia. Will other states follow? It's a big question. Um, all right, panel, we'll get into that at the, uh, at the top of the hour. Looking forward to it. Benjamin, Chris, Allison, see you soon.